<laughs> Welcome to Horrors Yet Unseen, the podcast where we assign each other horror movies to watch and then talk about it so our spouses don't have to listen to us go on and on and on about scary stuff they don't like. I'm Zach. And I'm Steve. Let's talk about some scary movies. By the way, there will absolutely be spoilers in this show. You have been warned. Hey, Zach. Hey, Steve. That is the end of the music. That is the end of the music. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, I need to. I need to redo that. And I don't ever like my, hearing myself say the the spoiler thing. It sounds cheesy. I understand. There are spoilers in this podcast, but there are and people. People probably should be. They should know that those. That's what we're going to be doing. Right. We're going to be talking right. about that. But I'm adverse to. I was adverse to mentioning it in the beginning because my thought is, duh. What was well, that? I mean, what the heck was that? What kind of face is that? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh my gosh. Um, I, well, so there are podcasts that have zero spoilers. Yeah. Um, you know, but we can, we can talk. I, I, I have ideas for second season. season okay, two. Yep. Ideas for season two. Fantastic. Yeah. And Great. if any, any, if, if any of the, uh, more than one listeners out there that we have, um, yeah. want to give us any ideas for second season, you know, um, something, that you love or don't love about the podcast that we can do more of. Specifically, if you don't love it, we're going to do more of it. Just let us know. Yep. We're going to do um, the opposite of what you say. Right. So you're like, we, it's really annoying the mouth clicking, all of the mouth clicking. We're going to do even more. We're just going to dehydrate ourselves for 24 yeah. hours. And then our mouths are just exactly all of that. Man, that was immediately, <laughs> that immediately got me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Me too. I'll be honest. I wanted to exit <laughs> and hit the, out. hit the red button and be like, "I'm out of here." Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, like Zach complains too much. I want to complain even more. Season two. Yeah, brace yourself. Yeah. Not enough therapy with Zach is, I think, what they're saying. Well, yeah, you know. Take it. I mean, we'll we'll do more of that. Great, more more therapy with Zach in season two. I appreciate that. <coughs> sure. I gotta wait. I gotta wait till next year though for therapy. Prep yourself. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Zach, wouldn't, would you like to kindly take us through the news of the day? I would love to do that. A lot of a lot of this news stuff is. Uh, I'm just going to mention it and then move yeah, on. Okay. I have okay. nothing really to say other than I just <laughs> want to say it out loud. If you have sure. other stuff that you'd like to say in in relation to the news, fine. Um, so okay. I think we should name our followers, okay? I I forget specifically how hmm. – who suggested this or how – like how this came up. But I thought it would be fun to name our followers. So I asked uh, – uh, Mr. GPT, if if uh, he could come up with some names for our uh, followers, um, like Doug, Cindy, yeah, just yeah, we're just gonna change their individual Giselle. personal names. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So here's what uh, Chat GPT came up with: okay. um, the Unseeners. <laughs> okay, okay, the Unseeners. The horror hounds. This is my genuine. This is my favorite. It's called uh, the, uh, the turd minions. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I, okay, <laughs> this is a nod to smoking hot turds. <laughs> and the, the, uh, yes, I, I get that. <laughs> the turd minions, genuinely in my like, that's an amazing one. I, I that's my vote probably. <laughs> See, uh, it, okay, yes, and. <laughs> okay, yes, and yeah, because you have clear objections. <laughs> Not all ideas you have to yes, and you're allowed to speak your mind. <laughs> well, while I think that's hilarious, 
Okay. I don't know if I would want to be called a Tur Dominion myself. No, you wouldn't be. Or f- the twenty eight people who follow us on Spotify would be called the Tur Dominions. Well, I mean, unless I was like a, a caprophiliac, but you know, we, we don't want to go there. It feels like you Google that word right now. It feels like you. I just need that off of my head. You just okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, I, mean, I, th- I think I think that's the right word. I, it's, I, I know that caprophage is a cap- oh, that's, uh, maybe it's the right word. I don't know. Hmm. I'm not okay. one. I don't like the poop. You don't like you know? the poop. <laughs> I mean, I like to get rid of it, but let's not. You know, we don't need to go into that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. The other one. The other ones are just really moving on immediately. <laughs> ran quickly. The right. other ones are not worth mentioning. Um. And because uh, they're they have nothing to do with our podcast. Okay, it's funny that Chat G- I've, I've 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 quote unquote spoken with Chat GPT enough that it has a memory, and it's mm. I'm I I'm allowed to update its memory, right? To help it personalize mm-hmm. quote unquote conversations with me, right? And mm-hmm. this makes me sound super lonely that I talk to an AI, but um. I, I literally, that's all I asked. What should we name our podcast followers? Because it knows that I have a podcast. It knows mm. what the podcast is called. And it knows okay. that we're, we're about to have a, an end of the year awards ceremony called the Turdies. Because it literally, number three was the oh, Turd Minions. That's why it, it said, said the Turdy thing. A nod to the Turdies is what it said. Hmm. Um, really? The, the Turd Minions. Oh, it said that. It said a nod to the Turdies. Yep. Number three, the wow. Turd Minions, a nod to the Turdies. Uh, okay. So it 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 has the, but I, I I still love the turd minions. Anyway, um, I would say we're taking suggestions, but let's be honest with ourselves, Steve. No one's gonna give us those suggestions except for <laughs> us. I've season two should come maybe with more hope for more um, uh, listener interactions. Uh, because so far season one, I've killed that hope of um. <laughs> I have zero you've hope. Put, you've pulled the 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 hope out of the out of the atmosphere out of the universe. I mean, it's it's gone. I Thanos snapped it away and dashed its head against the rocks. Is I mean, the I will say this: we did get uh, two months ago. Apparently, we did get um our first Spotify comment. Um, oh, a uh, user uh, Smorton. Yeah, wrote um, uh, seven consecutive peaches and then one beer. Hmm. So all emojis, seven consecutive peaches and one beer uh, on episode 36. uh, No one gets out alive slash Halloween uh, three. So who um, does Morton person be? That's a great question. I. Hmm. I'm not too sure how to feel about that comment. It's not necessarily the direction I, that I would like to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, because, you know, just words <clears throat> and normal communication. Um, but oh, you prefer words with communication? I I mean, there's a time and a place for an emoji. I will say mm-hmm. that. I just don't know how to interpret based on that particular episode. Seven peaches and a pint of beer. I'm not too sure mm-hmm. how to. So how to interpret that? Um, what was happening in that episode? Do you remember? You know, um, uh, many moons have passed since that episode, and mm. I can't remember what I did yesterday, let alone what we did two months right. ago, what we talked about two months ago. I don't. I also am not. <laughs> I don't. I want to. I don't want to bank on the fact that it might have anything to do with what we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. I just don't know how to react respond to that anyway um so yeah so there's that i think we should name our followers at some point we should come up with some names maybe throw them around um you do know that i'm a smorton right are you smorton yeah <laughs> no you're not yeah I am. dude freaking smorton <laughs> dude well that pisses me off more than i thought yeah. possible yeah. that was I that was I, a, a, we had a slight, a slight discussion about um, your peach beer. Dude, I got to be honest with you. Okay. 
That is so disappointing. I'm so sorry. It's genuinely, I thought there was a real person out there. I thought it was like a bit. (laughs) Nope. It was not a bit. I was genuinely like, what am I supposed to do with this information that's smorting? Uh, Well, I'm sorry to ruin your day and and answer your question all at the same time. Well, okay. Um, It's not necessarily a day ruiner. It's more just adding to the disappointment. I sucked more joy out of the air. Can we we back up? We can do that. Yeah, it's fine. We could just back up. Yeah, I wonder exactly. who Smorton is. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. Hmm. Yeah. Um. So here are a couple. Uh, just we're just going to mention them. If you have something to say, great. If you don't, we move on immediately. Um. They're making a Popeye horror movie. <sighs> my first reaction to that, and I saw the trailer, was, do we have to do this? Can we just stop? You know, yeah, feels like a bad trope that, um, like one or two, like uh, bear, like what oh, the the teddy bear, um, Pooh movies, mm-hmm. Winnie the Pooh, yeah, that's funny, that's that's like, yep, kind of clever, yeah, but now it's just it's a pile on, I guess, you know, right. In the same vein as the Popeye movies, they are making a uh, Little Mermaid horror movie. Yeah, I saw that too, Looks and really um, bad. <laughs> I looked at the yeah. trailer. I literally wrote down so uh so fun to learn. It's so fun to learn how the world is crumbling. That's, <laughs> I wrote that down in in relation to both the Popeye because I think you're right. There is there is already a I, I don't want to say studio, but there kind of already is this studio that's mm-hmm. doing these Hooniverse esque mm-hmm. movies. What's the Ruined Child or something? Ruined Child, like yeah, something like that. And, but there are these other companies that are also doing that. Like, shoot, even, even Art the Clown, David Howard Thornton was in the movie, The Mouse Trap, where he played Steamboat right. Willie, but he didn't <laughs> play Steamboat Willie. Really? Like he, it's, first off, it's a really bad movie. It makes Terrifier 1 and 2 Wait, look What's it called like, again? It's called The Mouse Trap. Okay. Um... Uh, huh. Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse takes his daughter to a, a a concert. He's got some people locked up in his basement, mm. but the police are surrounding the uh, venue. Yep. He's got to try to figure out how his way out. Right? That's the yep. s- same movie. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah. He doesn't. He basically plays a regular dude, a regular serial killer in a Steamboat Willie Mickey Mouse. Or Mickey Mouse uh, mm. mask, and I'm like, I thought that this was, I don't know, I had other expectations for Did it. Did you see but the whole movie? I, yes, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. A lot of ten second skips, because again, it's a trash movie. Oh, I see. Okay, I see it. Yeah, and just having David Howard Thornton as the character is not enough to make this. A the 2024 one, right? I believe so, yeah. Um, it doesn't list David Howard Thornton at all. For real? Am I thinking of the wrong movie completely? It's Simon Phillips. Is it, there is, is another it, a, a, a mouse movie that... So this one doesn't look like Steamboat Willie. Mouse Steamboat Trap. Mickey, whatever. The Mouse Trap. Dude, I freaking could have swore. Simon Phillips. What movie am I thinking of then? Either way, the mousetrap is terrible. But yeah. All right. Now let's Google it. David Howard Thornton. Screamboat? Is it no. Scream is it's Screamboat? I was is thinking it? Yeah. He's also he's also the mean one in the mean one. He's the Grinch in the mean one. Hmm. Anywho, that's 2025. I was thinking The Mousetrap. Yeah. It's just okay. a bad movie anyway. Still, I mean, yeah. Sorry, David. Don't do that to Mickey, like damn that. it. I'm so sorry. Gosh, jeez. I mean, in general, not you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, don't. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for my colorful language. Yeah, wow. You're just super <laughs> aggressive today. Super just, aggressive. You got to take a nap or something like that, dude. Aggressive. Um, <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, Coke made an advert, a Christmas advertisement using AI. Um, and I wrote down, I found it funny that we can't use AI in the writer's room because of job loss and blah, blah, blah. But no one is complaining about Coke doing this. I think a lot of people are complaining about Coke doing this. <laughs> okay. I've I'm not seeing it. Yeah. Okay. I've seen zero complaints about people. Yeah. I've not seen it in the news. I've not seen it anywhere that it was like a flash in the pan kind of thing. Like the, the ad yeah. dropped. The headline was Coke made this with AI. And not just the script, like apparently the whole thing was AI. Really? Just like I haven't seen, I saw that I didn't, I saw, I didn't click on that on YouTube, but I saw the the thumbnail. And yeah, I just, I just found it funny that, I mean, there was a giant. It was a, it was a part of the this the the last giant writer strike that. Oh really? AI was yeah because you can use AI to generate a bunch of different things and write a bunch of stuff. Sure, you it will lack. A lot of heart. Most things will mm-hmm. lack a lot of heart because you're asking a computer to do something. Um, but anyway, I just found it funny. Also, slightly don't care. It's Coca Cola and do whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, I so I'm watching it part. Of, I'm watching part of it now, just like sound off, and it's impressive. <laughs> the, the, it is impressive. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, I get it. I would not, probably never guess by looking at it that it was AI, though. Yeah, if I mean, if, I, if someone says, "Is this AI?" I could probably say yes, but like, not knowing at all, I, I don't know if I would say. And I get, I get the the upset, at the frustration about the AI stuff, but I mean, I I've talked to people who still will not see um, Late Night with the Devil because there's like three seconds worth of of AI. It's one like, image. It's one image, and. It's shown one or two times, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, mean, I don't know. I, it's, it's a tool, you know. Yeah, yeah. I fully understand. It's a tool to be used. Anyway, uh, they're making a sequel to the shark movie Under Paris. Really? Uh, yeah. Because apparently, um, that movie that was a smoking hot turd, and no one really saw it. It deserves a second one. Uh, uh, and we now uh, exclusively throw to our, our um, media correspondent, Steve. Steve, can you please tell us why uh, you think that they are making a sequel to a really bad movie that just came out? Money. Thank you, Steve. That was a great news report. Uh, um, and sure. uh, we really appreciate Happy your your field work. We really appreciate it. Um, also, thank you for that bit. That was hilarious. Um, <laughs> I did not prep that. That was. Uh, well, you know what I'd say, because, you know, I'm right. Because it's freaking money. That, But here's the problem is that like that that money, that movie did not make money. Opening did, weekend. How, OK, go let's ahead. go to the let's go to the numbers. Let's let's there's do nothing this on live. the numbers. There's nothing on the numbers. No. And right there. So the, the, the there's a the page says. Budget was 20 million euro it's about 12 20, 20 million dollars um was a dollar that close to the euro these days wow anyway uh it didn't say what the what it made that's because they're hiding it from us they don't want us to know 63 percent 63 percent uh rotten tomatoes meter 30 percent upturn popcorn bucket audience score <sighs> it's also a Netflix movie, so it might not have necessarily made any money. I'm just now realizing that it's a Netflix movie. Yeah. So it didn't. It's hard it, to tell. It didn't. It had a budget, and Netflix is going to. Well, I will say as on, quick as quick as Netflix is to yank stuff that's good stuff mm-hmm. that doesn't make money. Yeah. I got to imagine that this made money somehow. I don't know how. That's oh, it, this, so. Uh, Variety dot com says that um, there are forty one million views in its first five days on that one Netflix. Yeah, but how, I don't. I don't. I don't understand how that translates to money. Like you, all, people already have 
Netflix account. Yeah, I don't know. They'd be like saying they, they that, give a slice of the pie to everybody, everything that's watched. Yeah. I mean, that'd be like saying that the Jake Paul Mike Tyson fight was a huge success because like 61 million people watched it. And I'm like, I watched it too. And no, it freaking wasn't. The actual boxing matches leading up to it were great. They were good because they were actually sanctioned and they had actual rules. And then Mike Tyson came out and I don't, I watched a Mike Tyson training video and that training video was more entertaining than the actual Jake Paul fight. It's crazy. But my point in saying all of that, besides to crap on Jake Paul and, and <laughs> the Mike Tyson fight, uh, is it would be like saying that it was a success because people, a bunch of people watched it. Because you look at the ratings of that. What do you thing, mean by success? I'm, what I'm, I'm, I'm saying that you just said that they could possibly make a second movie mm-hmm. because opening day on netflix a bunch of people watched it several million people viewed this and i said that would be like me saying that the jake paul mike tyson fight that just aired on netflix was a success because 61 million people watched it despite the fact that nobody had anything good to say about that fight Mm -hmm. right see um viewership does not equal viewership does not in my opinion does not equal um quality because the rating the 30 percent rotten tomatoes audience meter tells me that that movie is garbage but also it's a shark movie <sighs> shut up like i don't <laughs> <laughs> how good can it actually be there's deep blue sea and then there's nothing else that's still it's a hard that. stance <laughs> there'll yeah, be more so- hard stances in season two <laughs> <laughs> so like i said you're a good person yes um, i am Thank and you. uh you you are a bit of an idealist that like if it's not good it's not it's not a success that's but, yes i am a very yeah, that, that's thank you for knowing me steve yeah. that's exactly who I'm i am stating that now because um <laughs> like but the ceo of netflix um does not give a rat's pootie yes about um the uh the goodness of the thing mm. um Let's see, Mr. Ted Sarandos, CEO, looks like a total white guy, boomer fella. Um, white guy, boomer fella. Well, no, he's probably Gen X technically, but he looks like a looks like a guy who cares about the monies. He does definitely and care it, about the money. He doesn't care if it's good or not. He just cares if it's uh, making money. The boardroom. He dropped he out of happy. Glendale Community College. Well. I mean, not everybody's a winner. Yeah, well, you know. As a child, you spent hours watching TV shows. <laughs> well, where are you? Where are you that we're now getting a biography Wikipedia. of? Wikipedia, this is great. Oh, That's my funny. gosh. Um. Uh, anyway, so it's all about the money. If, if, they're, if they're making a second one, and the thing I was reading said that they might make it a bigger, give it a bigger budget. So it's got enough eyeballs. It's probably all the incels sitting at home. With shark fetishes, you know how it goes. Yeah, I guess. Sorry to put that thought um, in your head. No, it's not <laughs> a thought that wasn't already there. Um, <laughs> I don't know just, how I feel about that one. It's it's yeah okay. Well, sorry. Um, I'm just here to burst bubbles. You know that's what I do. That's it. So okay, la- last bit of news before we move on. I wanted to give a shout out to the podcast Brutal Bazaar and Boozy, um, hosted by a mother and son, Jane and Declan. Uh, they reached out to us on Instagram, asked us nice. if we check out the podcast. I I listened uh, yesterday. I listened to episode what was it one hundred and three, um, mm-hmm. titled "Kidnapper Ariel Castro," and. Uh, UFO, Marcus DeWild, and a French cocktail. So basically, it's like uh, mm. Jane Jane walked us through this French UFO encounter that apparently right. changed. They wrote a law stating that huh. UFOs are not allowed to fly in their town. <laughs> <laughs> 
Did they publish or, it to the UFOs? Or they'll be detained, <laughs> like, which is a crazy law. It's not a recent, like, this was a long, long time ago. And, uh, and then Declan brought up, uh, he talked about um, Ariel Castro, and they uh, made and tasted a cocktail. And the 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 one of the great I think one of the great things about this particular podcast is the fact that it's short, so you mm-hmm. can consume a lot of it. Right. Um, right. They have several hundred episodes out now. You can consume a lot of them. Um, one hundred and eighteen quickly, um, and. Uh, so it doesn't take up too much of your of your time. I say that as we <clears throat> ramble on for two hours sometimes. Um, and um, even though you could just pull a miles and go three three x speed, which is again still wild. Anyway, they reached out to us. I wanted to check them out, give them a shout out on the podcast. Uh, I'll I'll pass everything off to you as far as putting them in the okay. shouting them out in the show notes and. Um, yeah. We'll what I, what I really want to know is this: you say that they're mother and son. Is yes. there any evidence to that? To that end, I mean, I mean, how do we know? Th- they state I mean, they, that they they are talking. It's a, it's a podcast where the, we talk about brutal crimes, bizarre occurrences, and get you drunk with cocktails themed around one of our stories. Correct. Yes. Um, I don't know. That's kind of sus. It sounds like kind of brutal and scary and uh, boozy and bizarre. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure they're yeah, fine. My brain you know? didn't know how to compute the fact that you were like, "It's super <laughs> sus, super and sus." It's super I mean, sus. You yeah. talk about scary things and and boozy and bizarre and brutal things. I I don't know. I don't know what this says about you. Okay. I mean, I would never talk about scary and brutal things. Never. Would you? No. I don't know. If, have you ever done that? No. 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 Maybe for the past, you know, 45 episodes, maybe. <laughs> Other like than that, that, never, never. No. Uh huh. Yeah. And it was only your introduction to me that made you that made you right. do that, right? Like you were a perfect yeah, lady. Sorry, <clears throat> sorry, Jane and Declan, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I'm sorry. I, I'm, in, I'm in like in full on little brother mode today. I Like I was telling yeah. Zach, I haven't, it's early in the you're, day. I haven't had enough people to give a hard time to. You're and, fine. Uh, you know, you're perfectly fine. Too if, much coffee, not enough uh, cocktails with a boozy podcast. Yeah. Drinking out of your wooden mug. Um, Absolutely. Uh, that's all the news that I got. Um, if I, all if news, I could do a Tom news, if I could do a Tom Brokaw accent, I probably would at this moment, but I, I can't. So I won't. Says Tom Brokaw. Yeah, that was. Is that okay. it? No, that was Tom Brokaw. Tom Brokaw. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> well, now you're just making fun of him at this point. So I'm not. I'm not making fun of you at all. I'm making fun of Tom Brokaw. Let's. I think I'll we should stop. talk about. I think we should talk about. We got. I got two things left on on the list. Okay. I want to talk about them with you. First off, the creep tapes. Oh yeah. I want to talk about now, your thoughts I've on seen one on, of them. You've seen the first one. I haven't. I keep reading to watch the second one. Sorry, is the second well, one the that, first one? I know that twenty minutes is is. It's a lot. I know. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of time. I mean. If you give me like a two hour movie, no problem. But 20 minutes, that's a lot. I know. That's crazy. No, so I, I did watch did the you first one of- and I, and it was very, it was very much like the movies. It was very good. I thought it was good. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I felt like it was a kind of a good start, but I feel like, I feel like it needs to ramp up from there a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I it do was know good. What you're saying. But um, it, I, it wasn't creepy enough somehow. It was creepy. Yes, but I didn't get the, and I wonder if the if the difference is the shortness of the the thing versus mm-hmm. like the long, slow build up because that's part of the scary bit about the, the for the, the movies is that it's like this really long thing and like things happen along like what is going on here, um and maybe if I I don't know, it's a different it's a different uh, I mean, it's still visual you know audio visual pictures and movie and stuff but it's a different um. What's the word? Not venue. Medium. It's a different medium. So we should see how it goes. How many how many episodes are out? Just two? Just two. Yeah. Okay. New episodes out of each each Friday. So okay. yeah, but they launched they launched two uh 
I watched both of them because I don't have raging ADHD. And <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I probably do have undiagnosed ADHD. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I watched the, the first two episodes. I thought I kind of slightly thought the same thing. But your your point makes me wonder if. So it's. What's the formula then for for creep? Like what what is it is it attitude plus time equals creepiness? Well, I I'm not sure. What, so what would what would give you more creep? What would give you more? Because I, I kind of didn't feel that way about the first episode. I thought this was a lot of it was Joseph or whatever his actual name is. I don't know right. if we will ever know his real name. Um. Oh, the, the the antagonist, yeah. the protagonist. <laughs> I don't know that we'll ever really because he just assumes whatever, right. whatever Identity. name he wants to. Yeah. yeah. Um. He. I, I I thought that the first episode the first episode reminded me very much of the first movie, mm -hmm. which is probably what they were going for. Yeah, nailed it, but. Um, and the second movie in the sense that they were outside a lot. Mm. Um, mm. but I, th I, I, it was, it was pretty, it wasn't as creepy as that first movie. It wasn't did as it creepy feel, as the second movie. Yeah. Did it feel formula? So because you haven't watched the second episode. Okay. I don't want to reveal too much about what I think their formula is. Okay. Because <laughs> I well, don't want to taint your view of the second episode. Okay. I was the, re the reason I asked it. The, it's, so the first and the second movie, they both are kind of predicated on the the idea of him putting an ad out, say somebody come view, video me doing a thing. Yes. That's the same right. premise of both okay, episodes. Yeah. Well, and I wonder, I wonder if having not seen the second episode yet, I wonder if that, is that a sustainable idea? I mean, like, so, so it doesn't get several doesn't get, hundred. People. I know, I know, but I mean, for, like for a TV show, not for reality. Well, I mean, oh, okay. for, you know what I'm saying? Is it, it going to yeah. get old? It could. It yeah. could very easily get old. I think that. I think that they. Okay, I didn't like the fact that they used an axe in the first episode. I yeah. wanted to see a different way that he could kill people. Right. Because it was very first Does episode. He use this, the, did he use the axe in the second movie? I forget. It's been too long. It's been, yeah, I don't, how does, is it axe? I don't know. How does he die? I think he wants to be buried. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I forget. Yeah. Also the fact that the second movie left on a cliffhanger that. Right. Did like she, she she moved on with her life. Right, right. But he's still stalking her. Right. That. Well, the. Oh, no, hold on. The second movie, it starts out with him meeting up with a guy. Yeah. At that is house. Yeah. Hmm. At that well, guy's house. At that guy's house. And he like stabs him. And then was he was that he's based. Like, was that based upon like an ad for video record me doing a thing? I think so. Mm -hmm. And then he ends up killing that guy and realizes that his life is completely empty. And mm -hmm. the premise right. of the second one is that he has this lady over and he basically reveals to her that he is this massive prolific right. serial killer. And she doesn't believe him at first. Right? She doesn't believe him at first. No, but then she slightly gets into it and that's probably a survival tactic. Um, See, I was watching the first episode, Mike, it's called Mike. And, um, in which Joseph is pretending to be a guy. He's like trying to do a, a demo video to be in a, <laughs> he's kept saying like a nine month video acting for video tape. <laughs> yeah. Clock course or whatever, or program. And he, I, he does a really good job. I will say of being really creepy. Um, I was, when I was watching it, Chrissy walked by and she's like, what is going on? It was when he was laying in the bed saying, like, tie me up on tie me up with the rope and everything. Yeah. 
And my wife's like, what the hell is going on here? This yeah. is creepy. I'm like, it's, it's called creep. <laughs> That's the point. Yeah. So maybe, maybe I'm, uh, what I'm, I'm running up against the, I'm numb to everything <laughs> that, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, Cause I it really was creepy. I mean, I'll be I think that honest. I would like to see it. Was, I don't think that it was creepy as much as it was just him just being incredibly odd. Yeah. Well, He's just incredibly odd. Yeah. And yeah, in a way? I guess in a creepy way. I don't know. Um, I would like to see more. I don't know how the other episodes. I've not seen the trailers or anything like that. I would like to see how they're going to move on with uh, other episodes. Because um, there is a bit of some formulaic atmosphere about uh, the first and the second episode. Um I also don't know how many episodes there are going to be. I would assume mm. six or eight. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it is it is interesting, the shorter format. Six. It is, it is interesting, the shorter format of uh, this franchise. Yeah. So the, the, the interwebs say six episodes. The interwebs say six episodes. Yep. Great. Well, yeah, I can't I, wait. I enjoyed to... it. So I'm looking. I will watch the second one after this. Great. I promise. You also saw Smile 2, and I don't know that we got the chance to talk about that yet. Dude. Stellar. Stellar. Stellar flick. Good stuff. Really creepy. A legitimately scary movie, I'll say. There are a couple, a couple spots in it were like, eh, a little, little bit cheese ball. Like, like when she was in the bed in her in her office when not her office her her apartment when they're like all these people like like twenty people in her in her bedroom or her closet like coming after her and they're like all frozen you know dude I thought that, that was that was the one of the creepiest parts of the movie really I thought it's, I got like, into that like like crazy so it was it was legitimately creepy I will say that yeah but like part of me was like why are all these people in the, I mean that's like it's like the creepiest red light, green light I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, that's true. Because like every was, time I she'd like she was... turn around, they were frozen. And then she would so run away from them. And they would weirdly, in these weird poses, kind of come after her. Right. And I thought it was, but, it was but at least a great was, choreographed moment. That was very well done, yes. However, the thing I think the thing that threw me off was that it was so many people that I if I was like hallucinating into things like she was – yeah, like the the smile monster makes you makes you do. I'd be like, okay, there's too many people. This is not real, you know. Now the one dude in her the, the, the to me the scariest bit was probably when she was in her apartment when she was starting hallucinating stuff and she saw the dude, her like the fan that was crazy. She saw him like back in the dark in the in the hallway. Yeah, and her and like the good dude's like clothes like scattered on the floor. Oh, that was wild. I would have crapped my pants. Yeah. And he started running at it. That that was legitimately scary because like that was believable. But yeah. the like the dozen, twenty, whatever, twenty people like like on her ceiling and like doing the weird thing. I'm like, I don't know if I'd believe that, but she was in the right she was in the right or wrong frame of mind, I guess you'd say. So yeah. it was believable yeah. for her, I guess. But And that's the point. Like yeah. yeah. She's losing her mind a little bit. And uh, you know. It did a See, very good job of making her show like she was losing her mind. Yes, yeah it it was True. a it was a slow. I would say that it was this slow fade, but there were these. I mean, just there were these mega massive moments that were very visceral. So it was this slow fade for her to lose her mind. Mm-hmm. But yeah. But like that very first, that very first were kill. I shouldn't say the very first kill, but like, you know, her drug dealer. Oh yeah, what do you, that what was, do you think that, about him oh, dying, dude? That was brutal. Do you see, do you see his, what I mean? Yeah, like they lingered face, on his yes. smiling face. He hits himself like three times in the face with this like forty-five pound uh, barbell. To the point where his face is fully smashed in at, at yeah. but he's still smiling. And they linger for 
five to ten seconds on his face, and I'm like, oh my gosh, please turn turn the camera. Oh. <laughs> I, so I, I, I agree. But when I thought about, like, I'm th- actually, I'm thinking about it back now, kind of back through the, when I just said that it was creepy from her perspective. Yeah. They did a really good job of showing things like that from her perspective. Like, if you were in that room, dude bashing his face and like that, I mean, I don't know if I could look away. Of course. It'd be, it'd be disgusting, but you'd be staring at this thing. Yeah. And, you know, his, his like, countenance shows up once in a while, a few times later in the movie. Like, she kind of glances and sees him once in a while. Yeah. And just the fact that he's so, it's so brutal. It really drives it in like she would be looking at it and makes you, they make you look at it like she was looking at it. Right. I, and I will say the first seven minutes that they let you see, um, that was brutal. It was brutal. <laughs> that's pretty brutal. Yeah. It was, and, it was a brutal <laughs> intro to this movie. So don't do drugs, kids. Well, I mean, okay. I mean, don't do the kind of drugs you have to buy from a dealer that gets shot. Okay. Yeah. Those are the good ones. Yes. The, don't yeah, do. No. Yeah. No, those um, are the bad ones. Wink, what wink. I say, the good ones. Oh, okay. <laughs> so those sorry, good ones. I've never done those drugs. I'm so <laughs> sorry. Even though now no one believes me, it's fine. Um, yeah. So there was that kill. I didn't fully understand, and I kind of wanted them to go a little bit deeper than they did into her relationship with Jack Nicholson's son. Um, a little bit Who, more. What? Who's Jack okay. Nicholson's son? So I'm almost positive that it's Jack Nicholson's son. Maybe I could be wrong again for the, the umpteen time today. Um, smile. No, IMDb. Ray Nicholson? Yeah. Oh, he wasn't Smile. Oh, the dude, he's in the flashbacks. Yeah, he was her boyfriend that she killed in the very beginning of, like, she hit, this is how right. she hit rock yeah. bottom. Was she right. was on these she was on these drugs he and then they showed him that he was driving the the car the truck or whatever I actually thought it'd be a great it'd be even better than that I thought that like I don't know he was driving the truck that killed the guy from the opening episode like to connect mm. it all I was kind of waiting for that to happen too. Because it had the, it, not that the opening scene wasn't impactful. Yeah, but totally it connected. But. Slightly didn't have anything to do with the rest of the movie, other yeah. than this monster, con- this smile monster. Um, now, so remind me with the connection there at the beginning. The guy who got killed, smashed by the truck, he was the guy at the end of the first movie who got got it from the girl, right? Dude, is that for real? I think that's I think he's the guy in the first movie. Is this a, is this just the continuation? I think it's a f- continuation of the first movie. Pretty sure. Holy smokes, it is. Yeah. So it was a, I got to go back and part. rewatch that now. And and then when he's walking down the road from his car and he sees that person burning, like that that he sees like on the, on the side of the road, like there's a person standing there completely engulfed in flames. Yeah. That's the girl from the first movie where he's like seeing visions of her still. Okay. So this movie, okay. So it didn't have, it's not that it had anything. It had everything to do with, it was just a continuation. Wow. Holy smokes. I did not. I, I think it had just been a while since I saw smile one. Right. And I just fully forgot. Yeah. I do like how it was a direct, direct continuation. And you don't know how long these guys have been dealing with this crap. I guess probably a week. I guess kind of in the lore of the show. Takes about Probably. a week for you to go crazy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I one of the one of the incredible things to me was the fact that so in order to be inhabited by this smile monster, mm-hmm. you need to witness the person being tortured die. I thought it was just killed. That's what did that be tortured? I thought it's just just die. In in order to be inhabited by the smile monster, you okay. need to watch the person who is currently being tortured. You need to watch oh, them like die. internally, like internally tortured. You don't have to see them like getting their nails pulled out and stuff. No, you, you just mean. you. So like if you if if the current host has to be killed in front of you, the current host has gotcha, to be killed okay. in front of you. Exactly. Yeah. 
And so every, that means that everybody in the stadium is now inhabited with the smile monster. See, that's, yeah, that's, that's, is that how it works? Is it a duplication thing? In or is order, it a one -on -one thing? The, I think I'm almost positive that in order to be inhabited by the smile monster, in order for the smile monster to take over your life, you have to witness the current sure. person yes, who's being true. tortured to die. She died up on stage by yes. the smile monster, and therefore, Everyone in that stadium who watched her die is now inhabited with the smile monster. Their torture now begins. Their That's seven days begins because it was it was unclear in the lore whether or not it's a one if, a, if there's one monster that can only go from one person to one person because I've only ever shown a person get, like receiving it from another person and it went into one on one situation. They've right. never had a one on multiple. So the fact that you're right, it's the fact that they sh showed it to everybody it could mean that it's in everyone, or maybe it's like a maybe like it was splintered into that many pieces and it's like not as strong, but on lots of people, perhaps, possibly, or maybe well, just one person. So the nobody in Smile Two, no main character in Smile Two, witnessed the guy dying in the first seven minutes. True. So where did that smile monster go? No, no, no. He, he, like, uh, the, 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 the guy who was sold her drugs was buying drugs from the, the guy who got shot in the beginning. He's like, you weren't supposed to be here. That wasn't meant for you. Dude. Her drug dealer was in the room when we saw the I'm guy I'm not shot. entirely convinced at this point that either my brain works or that I saw this movie. Okay. I don't know sure what's, saw it. what, the, what the heck is happening? So he goes and he shoots the, he accidentally shoots the drug dealer. Yes. And, and then the, the guy who's behind him, who's not supposed to be there, right? That is the drug dealer who bashed himself in the face with the with the uh, weights in the in the apartment. He okay. was there getting uh, drugs from him to sell to other people. I don't pay attention. Apparently, that's what we're learning in this <laughs> particular episode: is that I genuinely don't pay attention to really just anything in, in life, and I need to maybe <laughs> I I don't know what's happening. I, I need to clearly go back and rewatch these things. Um, yeah, so. Anyway, yeah, that's my, that's my at least initial take is the monster wants to get in front of as many people as it possibly can, right? So it, and I think that's where they're going with it for sure. It it finds a way to take over a gigantic pop star's right, uh, you know, life, right? Yeah. So I, 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 but here's the thing: is like now I want more. I want it was such this was such a good movie that apparently I didn't watch half of that and picked up and did not pick up on uh, crucial. See details. the problem you watched the first seven minutes with you was smiling the whole time and it broke your brain. I was probably so focused. Honestly, I was probably so focused on smiling the entire time that I didn't pick up on it. Um, yeah. So yeah, I want more. I want Smile Three to be like yeah. Now this now this city is fully taken over, hmm. like and this disease is spreading, and now. Interesting. But maybe is that just more of the same? Because when when Smile Two was first announced, I was like, "How are they going to do this? I don't understand how they're going to do this." And now I owe massive apologies to the writers of Smile Two because I, I, I was I misspoke because I I, I didn't am understand. Wondering. Well. We're not all, we're not perfect like me, you know, good luck. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the guy who was like saying, oh, you need to die for your brothers for like, my, to like, I want to say like, like my brother died. Sorry. My brother was killed by saying, I want to help you die. All that. Was that completely made up in her mind? hundred percent. So I actually think so. Yes. I think okay. that it was, it was fully made up be and it was because like he, <laughs> It's hard to say at that point, but she was the one driving the SUV the whole time, and she did not – she wasn't aware. She thought she was being picked up by her friend, but it wasn't her friend, right? Like, she right. was the one – she so she imagined that. Even though she was the one who 
was driving the SUV the, the whole time. Then she drove to that abandoned place, having right. this communication with this guy that so there's there's at he least disappeared. And, then, yeah, okay. and then he just disappears. And yeah. then actual like stuff hits the fan at, at at that at that point. So I think that she's fully delusional. But I think there was there's a way- stuff in that room still, isn't there? That's the thing, is that there is a there's a way to rationalize it and go he just died. Hmm. Yeah, or like, yeah, he was or killed. He, or every single part of that was fully imagined. Mm. All right, I can't tell. I w- I need to go back and rewatch it. Um, clearly to just pick up on the details that I I I fully missed that were main plot points. Um, and mm. uh, you know, but. I at least thought that this was significantly better than the first one. It was very good. And I'll t- to be honest, it was, I, I, I think when I watched it, I don't remember exactly where I think I watched it. I think I watched it with miles actually. I was not to see it. Um, afterwards I was like, weirdly like the, the back of my mind, part of me was like, is everything I'm seeing real? <laughs> yeah. Not that I was thought that I was like, uh, like, uh, inhabited by the spirit thing at all but i mean i do know reality from fake but just kind of like it's kind of made me think about what uh, maybe kind of for a while i was like thinking about reality a little bit more you know yeah because so much of what she was dealing with was what is real what's not and well yeah she 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 saw her mom kill herself but really it was her right exactly right she thought that she was being picked up by her friend but it really was her driving the car Yep, and you could then make the case that you know nobody actually sent her that text message, right? Like, because I think one of the one of the points of that scene was like, there's no way to escape this. I thought that it right. was a very clever idea where you're like, all right, well, I'm gonna k- legally kill you. You will be mm-hmm. legally dead mm-hmm. for a particular period of time, mm-hmm. and. Then you will be done dealing with them will revive you and you'll be done dealing with this particular monster. Mm -hmm. But they never they never fleshed that out. So the idea is still kind of out there. But also the idea in my mind, the idea is out there that there's no way to escape this once you are inhabited by this creature. It's over. You're right. going, it's going to mentally take over your life to the point where you're going to die. Right. Um, you know, so. Yeah. Is there a way out? I, yeah. No, there's no the, way out. The monster in this, when it, when she, when it comes out of her is so creepy. It's like, yeah. So just bizarrely weird and. Ugh. Yeah. It's got many mouths. Within the Russian nesting doll of mouths, yep. Yep. and yeah, it's a great monster. Yeah, it's, I think it's a great monster. I think it's great that you don't see it all the time. If you saw it all the time, it wouldn't be as interesting. Yeah, you only see it right at the end. You, yeah. I mean, the not just the end of the movie, but the at the end of at right the end of their life. The end, yeah, and you don't see her die. No, you just, I mean, she falls over with a microphone in her eye, but well, it shows that, her, it yeah. shows her with, with, like laying there with the microphone in her eye, but you don't see like her dying. So you're not possessed, but everybody else is. Yeah. The, uh, the, the camera's fully on the audience as right. she's stabbing herself in the, in the, in the eye. Yeah, that, this, that's so. gotta hurt. It's a big thing well, to yeah. go through the socket of your eye. Right. Yeah. As you're smiling. Uh huh. As you're fully smiling. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, so is smashing your face in with a with a barbell, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, both, both, I guess. I mean, I'm not going to try and like. I was going to say, do you want to test this theory? No, thank you. I mean, we can Pass. we can contact uh, you know Jamie and what's his name and get the MythBusters out here with the ballistics <sighs> gel and all that jazz. Hard pass. Okay, well, we tried. <sighs> Well, uh, I think we should move on to what movies we watched this week. Oh, that's not, I thought we were done with the podcast. Are we done with the podcast? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye guys. See ya. Have, have a good day. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, let's uh, move on to, um, <laughs> next thing.
what we what did we watch last week? All right, you've been talking for like an hour, so I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, I want to shut up. I don't want to talk. <laughs> so when when's the last time we recorded, sir? Um, for date purposes, for when I know how what would I talk? That's that's been... a great question. It's been a minute. At least two weeks. November 9th. 10 days. 10 days. 9th. Okay, here we go. Uh, so on the 10th, I saw Smile 2, <laughs> which we just talked about. And then I watched, because my um, brain was sad and, and hurt, I watched Amelie, because that's, that's the most beautiful, fun, lovely show. Okay. It's great. Love it, Amelie. If you haven't seen Amelie, you got to see Amelie. Got to see Amelie. It'll make you smile and your heart will be full of love and light. Okay. <laughs> then I saw Candyman, and I saw Heretic again yesterday, or two days ago. Again? Yes. Um, there's a guy I work with who uh, is an ex Mormon, and he he. I'm like, have you heard of? We we're having lunch. I'm like, have you heard about uh, Heretic? He's like, yeah, a little bit. I'm like, what do you think? He's like, why? I'm like, so it's about like a lot about Mormonism. He's like, what? I'm in. <laughs> so we went to see it, and he. Afterwards, he he told me all about the accuracies or the slight inaccuracies of the the movie for, from a Mormon, Mormon perspective. It's fascinating. Like so much of it was accurate, so accurate. Like all the things they were saying and the way they were acting, like they were about, about how they're super deferential to the guy, mm -hmm. even even to the point of danger. And um, apparently, there's even a, there's even like tales are told sort of in the Mormon missionary community sometimes about how. If you die on your mission, you you're like you're guaranteed to go to heaven no matter what. So even even in a life or death situation, some people are like, whatever, I'm going to go to heaven for sure if I go to, if I die. So weird set of situations, but and hmm. since then I've I've looked I've done seen a lot of TikTok videos and YouTube videos about the accuracy and the and how how one some people even see the you know you know with the do you know anything about the temple ceremony in Mormonism? They go to the I, temple in in Utah, or even I think even locally. I know you go to the temple. You do all this stuff. It's like it's like a symbolic journey to heaven. And in this, there's like a symbolic journey to hell. Because he's mm. like, you know, you need to go ut or dune before you can go ut. <laughs> yeah, and um, and that, like the Dante imagery, like the Dante's Inferno. Apparently, mm. when you go down in Dante's Inferno, when he gets to the very very bottom of hell. Everything is upside down, and it all it all inverts, and he realizes he's on the top of a mountain, not at the bottom of the, of a pit. And when she, after everybody dies, and she's in the bottom, of, she goes back to the 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 pit where they where the dead lady was with the pie. It shows her upside down, and the camera flips over to see her up right side up, just like in Dante's Inferno. So like, there's all this Dante's Inferno stuff. There's all this Mormon stuff, like dude. I don't know. Deep Again, lore. I don't know that. And now I watch this movie. Did I watch it? I have a I have a ticket here <laughs> for this movie. Well, I did see it twice, so I did. I have a fair. ticket, but all of the stuff that you're telling me right now, I. If you're a neurologist and you're out there, please contact me. I fear <laughs> the worst for my brain. I don't know what's happening. <clears throat> yeah. It's been a rough, rough few weeks. I don't remember the flip. Anyway, well, it's just one. It was just one, you know, camera angle. So you are probably, you know, blinking at the time. Oh, okay, that was at the time no that worries. I went pee. I don't know. There you go. That's what it was. Yeah, I feel like I watched more movie, movies, but I've been kind of. I haven't watched. Um, I've been watching more TV shows. Christine, and I've been watching this really good show on um, Max called Somebody Somewhere. It's really, it's like really heartfelt and and like warm. Warm feelings and fuzzy feelings in your heart. I've been watching a lot of. Uh, we saw Dune, the first episode of the Dune movie, the TV show. Dune Prophecy. Yeah, dude, really good. Have you seen it? I have not. Have you seen the Dune movies? I saw the first one. See the second one, like an adult. Come okay. on, wow. better than the first one by far. Okay. And then um, you can watch a. Uh, well, the, this is a prequel. Like it takes it takes place ten thousand years before the first movie. <laughs> it, isn't it funny how ten thousand years translates to basically the exact same 
visuals. Yeah, it's a little different. Nothing yeah. has changed in well, ten thousand years. The big players are like the House of Trades and Harkonnen, and it's about the founding of the Bene Gesserit, basically. Steve, did you just have a stroke? I don't know what you're talking about. You've seen the first one, right? I have, but I I barely watched it. <laughs> well, I read the book too, so that helps. So. Oh wow! Okay, now this is just turned into bragging with Steve. <laughs> Steve brags about his cool life. I read a book. Oh wow! Cool. What? I'm so awesome. <laughs> I know. You're so cool. Uh. Anyway, and so I've been fo- I've been reading it since the election. To be honest, I've been watching a lot more positive things than dark things. <laughs> okay. Because I've got enough darkness in my life right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyway, what have you seen? Well, oh, um, I I saw the creep tapes. Oh yeah, I saw one of those. Um, and then I watched. Oh man, yawning. Um, watched Evil Dead Rise again. That's a good movie. It's still good. So good. Still good. Um, And then I watched Bloody Hell. Mm. That's literally like, I mean, besides my the usual. I think Casey and yep. I just started, we just started watching St. Dennis Medical or St. Dennis something. We watched one episode of that, yeah. We watched the first episode of that. What'd you think? I thought it was pretty great. It's pretty good. I mean, it's by the same. Yeah, it's a little bit samey same. Yeah, and that's there's some comfort in that, and I like right. it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm not complaining about it. Yeah, um, you know, so yeah, I think that's that's about it. Oh, I've also watched a few episodes of in the past month or so. The show Teacup on Peacock, just called Te- it's not, it's just called Teacup. Mm-hmm. Have you seen any of that? I it's saw really the trailer, good. and the trailer does not uh, appeal to me. So I've not seen this. Okay, show. so it's 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 one of those kind of a slow burn things a little bit, mm. but it's it's very it's very much um, like I'll say J J Abrams ish. There's like something going on, and you know what's going on, and like the first episode has some pretty pretty gory stuff at the end of it, which is pretty like fascinating. Like what the huh? So mm. I'm I'm like uh, five episodes in, five and a half. It's really good. I would recommend that one. Chico. Also on the okay. lighter side of things, but still about ghosts, the TV show Ghosts on, I think it's Paramount Plus. Yeah. CBS. So funny. So I still funny. have yet to see this. I need, I need to go through this series. Watch, watch Ghosts before you watch Ghosts UK. Well, you could watch Ghosts UK, I guess. They're both, it's a spin, the ours is a spin off of theirs, but slightly better. Don't tell the Brits. I'm sorry. I won't tell, I won't tell them. Yeah, yeah well, USA, I'll never find out. USA. <laughs> Sorry. But it's really good. That has a very like said, different connotation at this point. It does. It does. But that's that's. I would recommend that one if you still want to watch something about ghosts, but um, a smile, one that makes you smile, and is a, uh, you know, it's good. Great. I'll stop talking now because I was supposed to be done by now. Over talking about what I've seen. <laughs> oh, you're perfectly fine. I I ramble on forever. You can ramble on forever. It's fine. Yeah, let's uh, let's chat about our movies, you know. All right. All right. Uh, why don't you go first? Why don't I go first? All right. Let me take a sippy sip of my coffee. Thank you for pausing. Um, pause. Go for it. All right, Steve. You assign me the 2020 classic. (laughs) The movie called Bloody Hell. Not specifically sure why this movie is called Bloody Hell, but we'll get into that. Okay. Um, I think this movie is inaccurately titled. Anyway, that's that's neither here. It is a weird. Yeah, it's kind of a. Yeah. Um, This movie has a 91% certified fresh to, uh critic tomato meter okay. and an 80% audience score so 
it's pretty yeah. rare, it feels like, that the audience and the critics agree. 3.3 3 out of 5 on Letterboxd, 6.6 6 out of 10 on IMDb. The okay. synopsis of this movie reads thusly. A man with a mysterious past flees the country to escape his own personal hell, only to arrive somewhere much, much worse. And let me tell you right now, that gives you basically nothing about what this movie is. Yeah. I, I literally totally. read that and went, okay. Not you can't even <laughs> say the first name of the of the act of the character, like uh so anyway. Here is my short movie summary of the movie Bloody Hell. Um Rex is a veteran who finds himself shirtless for half this movie. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> that's that's a typo. That's a typo. Let me let me correct that. Rex is a veteran who finds himself in a bank robbery that doesn't work out in the thieves' favor. He single-handedly takes down the robbers, but an accident leaves one and only one of the employees killed. Rex is then drugged through a completely unnecessary trial where they do not pin him as a hero who saved tens of people's lives in this bank robbery and took out three, four bank robbers. They solely focus on the fact that because he blasted some guy with a shotgun in the PP, <laughs> that some lady accidentally got caught in the crossfire and she died. So I don't know if you're getting the sense that I'm like, this is kind of a weak plot. You probably should be getting that. It's kind of a, at least a weird, a weird plot. Cause he's a, he's a, he's a military veteran and they're like, we're going to bypass that. We're just going to mention it just a little bit. It's some military training. We're going to say that. The only way you get that is if you're a freaking veteran. Um, like they mentioned the fact that he's been to Afghanistan, that he's was in, right. he was stationed in Afghanistan. We'll fully bypass that. So we're putting this veteran on trial <laughs> who has slight schizophrenia. I don't know because he at least talks to himself. And anyway, um, so you're saying veterans should never can never do can never do wrong. I'm gonna move on, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm freaking try to you don't support our troops. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't like this conversation. All right. So <laughs> so he literally that's exactly what happens. Like there they go to the they go to the back room. He they go to the back room. Um uh, one of the gals is being held hostage. They basically talk to each other, and the robber's like, you don't want to die? I don't want to die. She doesn't want to die. So let's just lower our weapons. Little do they know that there is an employee hiding in the closet right next to the thief, who also has a shotgun. The hostage gets away. Rex shoots the robber. In the crotch, yep. stating on the on the stand that he, what he thought it would be fun, and also he didn't want the robber to reproduce. Yeah, but the robber, the robber's shotgun goes off and shoots the closet, and a lady falls out and she's dead. Right, and that's the sole reason. I just found it funny that like all these people he. He got all these people. He took out three bank robbers by himself. And um, he took out three bank robbers by himself. Then everyone, he, he lets everyone go. Everyone gets out safely, except for two employees of this yeah. bank. One of them dies at completely freak accident dies 
Yep. And there is this national trial where he's on the cover of all these tabloids as this insane person. He f- he's going to go to jail for however long he's going to go to jail for. And I'm like, like for real, that's it. That's the, there's no, <clears throat> there's nothing that we can convince the jury of otherwise that he's not a hero. He act anyway, whatever. I ask um, you this, if I interrupt. So you're telling me that the U.S. justice system has never screwed up. I'm not saying that the U.S. justice system has never screwed up. I just found it. I just found it interesting that like this is a plot of a movie. I found it funny. I found it more accurate that the 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 justice system is screwed up than than anything. (laughs) Probably, yeah. Then cannibalistic baby. Yeah, I understand. Anyway, here we go. go. So, um, he gets out of jail. People still recognize him as, and also the day that he gets out of jail, it's like national news again. He can't go anywhere yeah, without without that like he he is out of jail. He served his time, whatever. He decides uh, he's going to get on a plane. He's going to go to Finland to start over. He chooses Finland by shooting uh, spitballs at a world map three times, and <laughs> uh, all three of them magically land on Finland, right. all while he's talking about fate with mm-hmm. his cellmate. Yep. Um, he is then kidnapped by a family and wakes up tied up in their basement. So, uh, there's a super creepy family who is stock, like basically kind of stalking him. Don't know why they're stalking him because at, at the air, at the air. No, no, they're at the air. He's at the airport. I don't know that he's, has he left yet? Has he yeah. flown yet? Well, he he flies he flies to Finland, right? Yeah, but what was the initial airport where they're stalking him? I think that that was still I, in America. Oh, I thought it was in Finland. It could have been. Either way, they they take his picture, yeah. send it to a taxi driver. The fake taxi driver cuts in front of the other taxi drivers and picks him up, knocks him out, and uh, he wakes up um, in the basement with his lower right leg cut off. So from basically like the knee down, gone. So apparently the, fate, deci- fate decided he had too many legs. Too many legs. And um, so he's tied up in the basement. And this begins the um, 50% of the movie where he is fully shirtless and just just completely shredded. Yeah. And, um, and uh, let's see. He then meets the family's youngest boy. Who he defeats pretty easily. Um, with his one foot. With his one foot. He chokes him out with one foot. And um, again, military training. But not a hero because one lady died on his watch. Right. Um, <laughs> he then meets... <laughs> <laughs> he then meets the daughter of the family, whose age is unknown to me, but seems pretty young. And... Because he is shirtless and ripped, and also because she wants to escape her family, she immediately falls in love with him. Yep, I poked that one. I, I poked that one accurately. Did I? Did I get that? I nailed that one. I think she sees him as a way to get out. Yep, she falls and, in love immediately. Yeah, I mean, I totally would. I mean, look, she's seen the guy shirtless. Good looking guy. He's okay. Yep. I mean, <laughs> and it was hard to miss. It's hard right, to miss. Right. And so she helps him. She helps him escape. Uh, the family, though, does not like this. No, doesn't like it. Turns out, plot twist, the reason they're kidnapping people is because one of their children mm-hmm. uh, is a cannibal. One, one of their of children, just one. Just they have like five, six children, so they don't all eat the guy. Just the one, one guy. Just the one, right? Just the one kid, very large child. Well, and yes, he. They find out from an early age, probably from birth. Don't know how he made it out of out of his mom, and also don't know why she's still in existence if he's a cannibal. Um. Like, why he didn't just eat his way out? I don't have a clue what the heck is Well, going you know, he didn't have teeth yet. Listen, that's not my problem. Uh, 
He's a find a way, make a way kind of baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, anyway, so he, from an early age, has a unique taste. <laughs> you find out he's a freaking a cannibal. It. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. He yeah. is a he's a cannibal, and I don't know how many. I, this might be where we. Full, okay, I want to say that this might be where we fully go into fiction. It's all bad. the whole thing. This thing's is fake. it. This is yeah. the point. <laughs> listen, listen. Up. It's all fake. I know the whole thing. I wasn't watching a documentary. It's fine. Um, but uh, yeah, because I don't know how many are there. Are there people who it just caused me to ask the question? Like, are there people who I never googled it because they don't really care? But um, are there people who are cannibals because, like, just from birth, or are you introduced to this kind of thing? Anyway, well, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure that this movie is meant to be like super realistic. It's very. It's a fun. It's a dark comedy slash horror. It movie. is. It is. It's okay. Dark. For sure. Um, did not know that it was a dark comedy. I was just laughing hysterically almost the whole time because the jokes were funny to me. It's um, it's it's funny in in the way to me it's funny because it's so ridiculous. And, yes, and over the top, but yeah, I mean, you lose a leg. That's hilarious. Right? right, right. Of course. So this brings me to my question that I want to ask you. Okay, um, what would you do if you found out that from birth one of your kids had an exclusive taste for flesh? Walk me through your thoughts. Me? Yeah, you. Because you're the only one mm. out of the two of us who has children. I would... Also, you're my co-host. And I want to ask you a question. Oh, you're asking me questions, right? Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, so from birth, you, the baby, baby comes out, super healthy, cool. Tired of, but, tired of breast milk after a while, starts eating the breast. Right. Well, I, I mean... Okay. Probably, I don't know. <laughs> you went in a very first, different direction. That my I, guess is that's the first clue you'd have. Like, you okay. know, it's got its mouth on a piece of meat. It's going to eat the piece of meat. Oh, <laughs> not, um, this is not at all I, where I thought this was going. I, I, I would immediately take the child to um, a quarry. <laughs> <laughs> And start throwing rocks at it. <laughs> no, I would immediately uh, take the baby to a waterfall, wherein I would throw the baby off of the waterfall, and then I would go to I the would, castle and report that I committed a murder. So I would, I would immediately take the child to a doctor and figure out what the hell is going on. What's what? Why? Why does the child it, like? Are they missing minerals? Because like, are they thing missing that, minerals? Yeah, that's what they need. They need more. Like, they well, need no, more. Like there's a, they there's more a magnesium, that, and they'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> iron i don't know yeah so well there's this thing a zinc women... deficiency so they like they like to gnaw on your arm so there's this thing that women sometimes develop on, in pregnancies especially when they, it's called pica where they like they weirdly crave like like sometimes they eat like dirt literally like mud or like it's weird it's bizarre okay. like because what's happening is their bodies are not um getting enough of the right kind of minerals and so they like their like their lizard brain knows that there's these minerals possibly in the dirt, so it's like they want to eat the dirt, and they eat weird, bizarre objects sometimes. And so it's a real thing. It's it's not very it's not as common anymore because people take a lot more prenatal vitamins and stuff, and that kind of covers that problem. But okay. um, I wonder if so. I'm like, is a kid like literally is he missing some sort of nutritional element of some sort? Okay. Um. So there, and, no, the answer is no. So, uh, it's just some supernatural, bizarre, weird reason that the kid wants to eat flesh. Yes. Um, what are you doing? I'm getting like, uh, pig carcasses. Pig carcasses. Yeah. And then I'm feeding that to the kid. And then I'm going to go, uh, jump off a cliff. Wow. Cause, or, you know, throw the baby off the cliff if you're, uh, an Austrian in the 1500s. Yes. You know, as you do. Okay. You're, you, so you're just, in other words, I don't know. <laughs> okay. That, well, thank you for thank you for running through your thoughts with me. Sure. Um, and by thank you, I mean waste of time. And so uh, <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, okay. So basically, 
uh, the baby has grown up. This kid has grown up, is now fully in adult form, but you find out that he's not mentally developed. Mm-hmm. I wonder why. Um, yeah. And uh, missing minerals. <laughs> yep. Missing minerals. And the movie concludes with Rex getting cut down, finding a shirt, uh, killing the family, and running off with the girl and her little brother. Uh, okay, no one seems to... finding a shirt. <laughs> yep. Yep. He found a shirt. It's very important to Zach. He found a shirt. It's not in this. Uh, it's not that it's important. It's fine that he's shirtless. He can be shirtless as America or Finland, whatever. But <laughs> um, it's more like just funny. It's a joke that I'm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, no one. No one seems to question the fact. So he gets back to America with this completely foreign girl. And seemingly her little brother, but you don't ever see him again after he goes to the hospital. Right. Um, He's dropping okay. him off, sort of, right? They they basically literally drop him off at the hospital, and then everyone goes home. Yep. No, he, or is he at the house? Is he at the house? I kind of don't remember this part, actually, very well. Anyway, so I think he's at the hospital. He is at the hospital. So basically what happens is... She he chokes him out. He breaks his nose. Like the the guy Rex breaks the little boy's nose. Catches America? him. No. Oh, when he's t- when he's tied up. Right, right, right. Okay. They they take him to, they take the boy to the hospital because the daughter insists that they do that. Cuz she's like yeah. he fell out of bed and that's how he hurt his that's how he broke his nose. Right. They right. take him to the 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 hospital. Find out these are not the uh this is not the way that you would get hurt if you fell out of bed. But right. they basically the whole family then goes back home. Cuz the whole family dies at the house except right. for the little boy who's back at the hospital still recovering and no one's visiting him. And Pretty good fight you, scene, isn't it? Remember correctly? Yeah. With, with the, all the killing and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because he's hiding under the table with a nail gun. Right. Yeah. And um, nail, but, nail gun kills are always good. Here's the here's the interesting part to me. Uh, none of none of the, uh, Rex's friends, who apparently now he all of a sudden has, um, question the fact that this girl is like in her. Tw- in her 20s. I don't know how old the daughter is. Right. But Rex is clearly somewhere between like 38 and 42. Yeah. Totally. And his girlfriend is now this 18, 19, 20, maybe 22 year old. But she looks super young. And could just and, be baby face. Well, and depending on his friends, they may be like, Nice one, dude. I mean, that's okay. <laughs> so, anyway, that's the end. Of, they all live happily ever after. A- amen. Um, issues that I had with this movie. Um, the again, the age range of Rex yep. and the girl is a bit funny to me. Uh, if the rule, I wrote this down. If the rule is half your age plus seven, <laughs> I th- I think they broke that. I don't I don't think that they abided by this rule. I didn't know that was a rule. Is that a thing? I don't know that it's a thing. All I know is that okay. it was in an episode of Parks and Recreation, and that's all that matters <laughs> to me. Okay, fair enough. Half your age plus seven apparently is some sort of rule. Okay. Um. Also, we only see a few minutes of the cannibal brother. Yep. And I thought it was kind of a bummer, uh, given all of the pr- you know the makeup and the prosthetics that he had to put on. That you only see basically a glimpse of him. Um, Praises for this movie. Uh, I thought this movie did a really good job with the humor. I did not know that this was a dark comedy kind of horror movie. Mm -hmm. Um, Like we got, I got to about half of this movie and went, I don't see the horror connection at all. I don't know what I'm watching. Am I watching the correct movie? I don't get it. Um, but I thought that this movie was a was a, a 
a great I thought they did a great job with the with the comedy uh, it, it it being very dry and uh hit or miss but I I thought it was still really really funny um I uh I don't know why this movie is called bloody hell um is that word that phrase ever used I don't think so I mean he was kind of in hell and there was blood I think that's probably the start of the stop of it, buddy. I think that's (laughs) genuinely it. That's about it. He went through hell, and there was also blood in this movie. And then that's it. Um, So, final thoughts. I thought that this was a pretty good beginner horror movie. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's not without flaws, um, but I thought it was a pretty decent movie. I'm going to give this movie a... Uh, three point five or a three out of five, um, solidly average rating uh, on our ratings level here. Yeah, yeah. three out of, three yeah. out of five. It was a pretty. I, I think it's a pretty good beginner horror movie because it's not the comedy undercuts a lot of the what you're about to see. Yeah, it's 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 a yeah, it's definitely a horror movie in in it in that he was captured, got his leg cut off his people eating flesh and all that kind of stuff. Right. And, uh, but yeah. 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 The most, I think, I yeah. think the most brutal, he's Australian. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. Just he, got distracted. The most brutal kill is pro or the most brutal gory part of the movie is going to be when he pulls his own foot out of the refrigerator and, Oh, that's good. Kill and, and literally shoves it down. Like, Oh, that's right. Like, Uses it like as like a bone like a, first yeah, shoves it yeah. down the uh, gullet of Cannibal Boy, yep. and then Cannibal Boy falls face first down, and bone leg or leg bone goes through. Yeah, that's pretty gross. It's pretty <laughs> gross, but I was like, "Oh, that's what you get for eating people." <laughs> By the it was way, a decent um, movie. Three at three out of five. Real time update. Uh, the gal who plays the gal is seven years younger than the guy. In Seems real life. Like, in real life. Yeah. So I assume that they were playing younger people or that she was playing a younger person, but I don't know yeah, what her age is. She definitely was. is. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah. It just, kind of I, 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 I she, she seems like she's playing some sort of like older teenager. In this movie, yeah, like eighteen ish, maybe. And he is a full adult. He's thirty one when when the movie was filmed, but he looks a lot older. He looks a lot older than yeah. So that's why I was like, sure. this is a bit problematic. Like you're robbing the cradle here, brother. Yeah. Like, what the heck is going on? But also, it's I thought it was the ending was very. Uh, did she did it did his friend. If you can remember this, I don't. Okay, that's fine. We don't have to talk about What's it at all. When you curious. bring it up, okay. Bring it up, please. Um, <laughs> I just <laughs> there's the end of the movie. They're sitting there at the table, which, by the way, he fully confesses to killing her family. I thought that was so funny because oh. the room fell silent, and then he was like, "He's like what?" And then the movie's that's over, right. and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, it's hilarious!" Because it is such an unbelievable story that you could probably tell it exactly like it is, right? And, nobody, and nobody nobody's <laughs> really gonna believe it. So, but uh, Finland girl, yep. Does she imagine Rex's friend touching his hand, or because she has this moment where she? Is looking at that is looking at one of the girls around the table, and she imagines herself cutting that girl's throat with like this giant meat cleaver. Mm. So the yeah. question is: Did that moment? Did the moment of that made her kind of a little crazy? Did that moment actually happen, or did she fully imagine it? I think I think the way that I read it was that she was just. It was like showing that she's she's just as cracked as her family still, mm. and that the, and that she's like a danger, and she's like, at any moment she could lose it and turn and into them. like, 
Suddenly, there's a second uh, at bloody at bloody hell number two. Oh dang! You know where she like eats his wanker. <sighs> okay, well, not in the fun way. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You know the fun the fun part about this podcast is that no one can see our faces. <laughs> so nobody knows specifically uh, why why no one knows except for us. I don't even know. Steve, I love this podcast. Anyway, um <laughs> Go ahead. Why don't you talk about your movie? Cuz right. let's move on. <laughs> All right, I watched Candyman from 1992. Yeah. Um, there are no people eating people in this. There is not. Or or legs cut off, as far as I remember. As far as I remember. Um, so, briefly before I get into it, I, I gave, this a, gave this sucker four stars. Yeah. I actually liked it more than I thought I would. That's great. Because of my aversion to older versions of things. I've yeah. seen the, the newish one. Um. And the one was from 2022, 2020? Something like that. Yeah. I think it was um, a pandemic release. Right. And I really liked that movie. I really liked the the, the newest one. It's really good. Um, <clears throat> this one has a, the older one has a, um, 90, a 90, 90, from 1992 has a 79 tomato meter, 63 popcorn meter from, from the audience. And um, IMDb is 6.7, uh, Metacritic 61. So, you know, IMDb, IMDb 6.7. So it's above it's above average everywhere, mm-hmm. <laughs> according to everybody. Um, Tony Todd uh, passed away sadly a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Well, on um, November 8th, I think. RIP. Yeah. But he was, yeah. But he was, he's very good in this. And he's, he's, he's one of the, I liked how he, so I've heard some, complaints in the past about certain different movies even the original alien movie mm-hmm. about how how little time the actual villain was in on screen yes. like you don't see the 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 full alien xenomorph in alien for like most of the movie yes. it's like in like 12 minutes of the whole movie or something like that but in my mind that's that's good kind of like the we're seeing the smile too like you don't see the actual bad like the the demon thing until the end I like that because in my mind, the, the human imagination is way better than anything you could see. And it allows the person to like, it allows the person viewing it to develop whatever they want to in their head. Like whatever scares them most is what the person's going to imagine in their head. Mm -hmm. And so that I like that when movies are very judicious about the amount of uh, screen time, a bad, like the bad, bad guy has. And I think that's pretty effective, but I think that so that's that, why people think that books are better than movies is because the, they, it, yeah. they get, yeah. they get, so this was one, I, I remember my, my first introduction to that thought was Harry Potter. Okay. Um, it, and it's because I thought it was always because JK has to describe to you Mm -hmm. the halls of hogwarts right so you get to picture all of this in your mind Mm -hmm. she has to describe to you the hogwarts express so you have to imagine all of this in your mind and people like using their imagination that way but in a in a movie you don't need to describe any of that stuff Right. You just get to see it. And and so it takes away from your imagination because especially if there's a clash. Mm-hmm. Like you right. imagined Hogwarts being this particular way and they're going to show it to you this way. And even though you know that JK is directly tied into all of the visuals mm-hmm. of the movie, she was an executive producer and all this stuff you don't like the movie over the book because you had it in your mind one way. Also, ramblings of a lunatic. I have nothing to back this up. I can just imagine people going, 
especially in in a in a movie like that there there are there are probably i know that a lot of people say that the the book the shining is significantly better than that than the movie Mm -hmm. um so there there are books like that out there um right uh but and and people have said that about about game of thrones you know not just the final season just in general and i think that it has to do with your the imagination that you get to or the imagery that you can imagine versus well, I think you're completely right. I think that's one reason people if you see the movie first, you don't necessarily think the book is always better. But if you read the book first, you almost always think the movie the book is better than the movie. Right. I because, I just go ahead. I was gonna say because you develop like I hear a lot of people complain about who've read the books, heard the Harry Potter books and then watch the movie next. They complain about what Ron looked like. Because he's not described not in any way except for the red hair, he's not like the books describe him at all. Because the books describe him as like tall and skinny, like a narrow voice, pointy nose, and he's not that way at all in the in the movies. Right. But if you see the movies first, then you read the books and you picture that guy, whatever his name is, the the Ron in the movie. You picture him in your head. Right. And then it's no problem because you kind of breeze past the fact that he was supposed to be different looking. Right. I didn't run into this issue. And it's not, I, I don't think that it's just books and, and, and movies. I didn't run into this issue because I don't play the video games. I did not run into this issue with Five Nights at Freddy's, but I know that people did. They did not like the movie because it wasn't, there were, there were aspects of the movie that were not like the video game because they were combining certain things and they were, they were yeah. taking other creative liberties and, and, and this character was supposed to be that and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I never played the video games. So I have no dog in the fight. I can yeah. just let this movie be exactly what it is. But I also know the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's was on set every single day and had full right. creative freedom over absolutely everything. So I go, well, this yeah, and you don't can have to be a the part, either. This can be a part of. It doesn't have to be the visual representation of the of the 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 feature. The, the 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 feature presentation of of um the video games this doesn't have to be the film version right. of the video games this can be its own thing in its own universe and you're also right. bringing this other medium that people don't that you're bringing the video games or you're bringing this film to a, a wider audience than the than the video games do right so you have to somewhat Adjust. transcend yeah. and include a little bit of those people mm-hmm. um, because they, they don't know the lore like you do. But you also don't have to be a giant yeah. stickler about it. Like, Well, it's not, not know, always the visuals either. Sometimes the visuals are fine. Like Honestly, the Five Nights at Freddy's visuals were fine. They looked a lot like the game. But there were concepts and like – and I don't, I don't know if enough about it, but I know my kids, there were like concepts and ideas and – ways things worked that were different and same thing with right. like same thing with game of thrones and it was, it was less about the like everybody i talked to like the visuals are great in game of thrones and i've I read the books as well and the visuals are great as far as the books go but it's like the, the content in the later up seasons was crap right but of course but it looked great <laughs> but it looked great yeah yeah so there's, there's a little, it's a bit of age but i think overall i think you're completely right about the the fact that you get a you build this world in your head, which is way better than anything that anybody could ever put on screen, because uh-huh. because not only because you can imagine more than that, but I think you imagine what you like by default. And if I'm imagining what I like, and you don't show what I like, I'm gonna be a little bit pissed off. That, now, another yeah, I, a, a great yeah. example of the, the done done well, quote unquote, is The Last of Us. And I've played both oh, yeah. of those video games, and the video games are. I like the movie. the The show is perfectly fit to the video games. Perfectly, uh-huh. not everything exactly happens the same way, but they 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 stick with the the source material very well, visuals and non visual stuff. So, yeah, yeah, well done. Anyway, what were we talking about? That's a great question. I don't know how we got on talking about Candyman. Candy Candyman, <laughs> which is not a video game or a book. Nope. Oh, this is you also said- why. You books said something at, about it. Book books made of video out of movies, always crap, always crap. I don't know why. Never, 
Never come, never come across a good one. Books made of movies. Like if it's a movie first and someone's like the novel adaptation of the, the other novelization. Movie. Okay. Yeah, novelization, yeah, yeah. that's the word. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Never seems to work out well. <clears throat> anyway, there's always outliers, but. Um, so a uh, movie, the movie roughly, uh, can, oh, I think I was talking about the differences between the two, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so the Candyman, 1992, <clears throat> well done with uh, Tony Todd and not being shown a lot. And um, I love the dude's voice is just iconic. It's just great. Yep. And he, that, I mean, that's like the scariest part of this whole thing is just him standing there and saying things. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. And the movie was a lot more <sighs> heady. I guess a lot more philosophical or not philosophical, but like, I don't know there's a lot, I felt like there's a lot more meaning and um, weight to it. It was definitely a, not like a schlocky horror flick. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like, I felt like it was trying, it was trying to get a message across about race, racism and class divides and um, the horrors that can happen when you, shove everybody in, in all the black people in Chicago into these projects, which is crappy housing and, you know, pushing them down and like what emerges from that and mm-hmm. how Candyman was, was birthed out of this slavery situation. And so like the, the themes in this were very serious in a lot of ways. And also, honestly, the, that's one reason I liked the, the newer version of the movie. Well, not actually it was supposed to be a continuation really. Um, Cause even in the new movie, at one point when it shows Candyman, it's actually Tony Todd, um, like a TGI version of him, but it's actually, so it's like a, more of a continuation, but, um, anyway, so I liked the movie a lot. Um, high, like high level, what, what the way where the way the movie goes is there's a scal Helen, <clears throat> a white lady who's working on her, I believe it's her master's thesis or doctoral thesis. One of the, one of those theses. Mm-hmm. And she has a friend uh, who is a, a black lady who um, has more of a connection to this this uh, tale of, or more of an understanding or knowledge about the, this tale of Candyman that comes from the um, the Cabrini Hill, Cabrini Green uh, part part of Chicago, which was part of the projects, which were um, the reason they called projects because they were housing projects built by the government basically to house lots of black people and to kind of put them in in a in a in a, in a pigeonhole keep them in one spot but then and and treated like horrible treated like trash basically mm-hmm. and denied all all kinds of things and but you know crime started popping up because of that and that's all that's a whole thing but in the 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 story of the candy man is if you say candy man in the mirror five times then candy man will eventually like start haunting you and it's kind of like the bloody mary thing if you say bloody mary right. in the movie in the mirror things happen um, but this is a very, it's like a, in the movie, it's portrayed as like a very holy, not H O L Y, but like f- a very fully, uh, like black community situation that that's, that's what happens in this, in this community. But she mm-hmm. and her friend, they both just like jokingly say it into the, into the, in the mirror. And she says it the fifth time, the friend doesn't say it the fifth time. So it's like kind of connected to her now. And they're doing this thesis on, um, like like urban legends and lore in, in urban environments. Mm-hmm. And so they go, they go to Cabrini green and she, and the white lady, the Helen, she's like, you know, typical kind of entitled white lady. And she's like, I'm going to go in there and learn stuff. And <laughs> her friend's like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. <laughs> this is not a safe place. Yeah. And they go in there and they're, it's kind of sketchy and they find the apartment where this theoretically happened. And the, the head, the face in the wall where the, she comes through the mouth and all this stuff of candy man. And over time, she starts seeing stuff, and it's it's a little it's kind of similar uh, has vibes of smile too, or smile and smile too, because things happen, and she doesn't th- she doesn't realize it's her doing it. Like she she kills, she ends up killing people, and they they put her into an asylum for because she's crazy, mm-hmm. and she's there for like a month, and she doesn't realize she's there for a month, and she kills the the, the psychologist and jumps out the window when she's imagining that it's the whole time that's it's a candy man doing this stuff right. and so which is you know the whole concept uh, movies that show that have this concept of i'm doing a horrible horrible thing that i would never do and i don't realize i'm doing it and then i wake up and i realize it suddenly those are those are kind of terrifying at a, like at a existential level <laughs> you right know? yeah because like i said even after the movie smile too i was like is everything i'm seeing real 
because you know that I know that there in real life there are situations like uh, schizophrenia, for example, where you do not realize that things happening to you are not really happening. You know, right? And like I've known people, uh, even like extended family members who had schizophrenic schizophrenia and, and that kind of issues, like imagining that, um, like I knew a guy who he was in World War II. And then he came back from this, from the World War II. And even 50, 60 years later, he was carrying a gun around and walking around his house, like doing a perimeter sweep on around his house at night because <laughs> he was thinking that the Nazis were out somewhere out there. Right. You know, and it was really, it, was, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a dementia thing. It's like he kind of done that his whole life. And because he was having schizophrenic problems anyway. So those, those are kind of scary. It's kind of a scary setup, but so she goes through this whole thing and, and she, um, um, her she comes back she escapes finally from the asylum from after killing the the doctor and she um gets back to her house where her husband was and he's moved on she's thinking that she's never going to come out of the asylum has right. a, has a girlfriend and he she she kills him and kills the girlfriend i think she kills a, she kills a girlfriend I forget i don't remember I don't know, it's been a whole week since i watched the movie <laughs> holy yep um, but she, uh, oh, two days actually. <laughs> Sorry. Well, anyway, well. three days. Anyway, um, she, she kills people, but then she, um, and, and, and then, anyway, in the meantime, this baby is, is kidnapped from uh, this mom's house. And, um, I, that's what, I think that's what gets her in, into the asylum. Actually, she, she takes the baby kills and the, like attacks the mom, doesn't actually kill the mom, hits the, attacks the mom with a cleaver. And then she's tracked down and, and and arrested, but they don't know where the baby is. I think the baby's just gone. Turns out Candyman has had the baby the whole time, squirrel away and in, in somewhere. So you can tell that the, the Candyman is real, but it's some on some level because the baby is still alive after a month being in like a wall someplace. So <laughs> right. I guess the Candyman is taking care of him somehow. So it's yep. not completely her being crazy. So, but it's like, she's thinking she's crazy. So I guess the Candyman is the ultimate gaslighter, I guess. Basically. Sort of. Anyway, she gets out, she goes, finds the baby because she, she thinks that she's just pure and whole and, and, and good and thinks she's doing the good thing. And she's like, going to go save the baby. And she goes, save the baby. And then she finds out the baby is inside this giant pile of trash that they have out there for the past month and a half for a, uh, that they're building for a giant bonfire. And so there's some of it's like a little, yeah, really. <laughs> yep. Um, and she, uh, she climbs into this massive pile of junk and finds, she sees the baby and sees, uh, I said Slender Man. She sees Candy Man. You can say Slender Man. It's fine. You just <laughs> mix all of the movies. Try to find it, kind of fights him off and, um, gets him burned up and she gets the baby and she crawls out. But as she's crawling out with the baby, she gets completely caught on fire and she, like all of her skin melts off and stuff and she barely makes it out and to save the baby and gives the baby and then she dies. And then they have the, the, the funeral at the end and all the folks from the project show up to give her support for, I guess, saving the baby, even though she killed people. I don't know that that part was a little bit, why are they there? Cause the, the looks on their faces were like, I'm like, I'm, I couldn't tell if it's like, if the, all the people from the project were pissed off and like here to like put her in the ground or like, Right. Were they there to like celebrate her and thank her because they threw the hook, like Sunderman's hook into the, into the casket with her into Candy the man. hole. It's <laughs> the man. I, the said, bad guy. I said, I said you can mix them. <laughs> I, I felt, I felt that that was a bit uh, unintentional. I felt unintentional. Was, totally unintentional. Yep. Anyway. So it was, I thought the whole overall, the movie was very well done. Um, for, especially for an need to, I mean, they had like 1990s kind of vibes of like some sort, some things were a bit goofy or like not believable or whatever. But um, a lot of like a lot of the tropes of the the way, like I don't know the the way that they showed her a lot was like in this, this glorified you know visuals of her like being like beatific and stuff. Yeah. Um, and they they pretty much only showed the dark side of the projects and how like the black people are scary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like she walks into the projects and immediately everybody is scary and like being like horrible to her, except for like this one kid yeah, who like warns her and then she gets beat up and stuff. Anyway, so there were some issues and some problematic parts of it, but 
overall the 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 movie was i thought it was a really good movie it's a really good scary movie because it wasn't a gory super gory mo- a movie um it wasn't super super jump scary there were a few if i remember correctly a few jump scares but it wasn't like cheesily done mm-hmm. it's pretty well done um so overall yeah like i said four stars i thought it was really well done and uh and a good good scary good scary movie so Well, all right. And um, what, what did you you rate it three stars? Looks like, dude. Honestly, and that's fine. I don't care what I, you rate it. I f- I f- I feel like I saw this movie a little while ago. I have no clue what it's about. <laughs> yep. I I have I have I know that I watched this movie, but I could not tell you anything of what you just said. Have you seen the new one? I did. Yeah. What did you think of it? I thought it was interesting, like you had mentioned. It is yeah. interesting how little they can show the villain. Yeah. But there is this menacing atmosphere always there. Yeah. And um, I think the way that the way that they told the story is is uh or the way that you can tell a story like that is impressive to me i did hear on another podcast i think it was the uh hello sydney podcast she she loves this movie and she she refers to tony todd as one of one of the few people that she refers to as our lord and savior tony todd mm-hmm. and um in the in the filming of this movie there's a there's one scene where he has like bees crawling all over him. Yes. And like bees like in and out of his mouth and his mouth is full of bees. Apparently mm-hmm. that's real bees, real him with bees in his mouth. He was stung like nine times or something. Yep. Inside and out inside and outside of his mouth and he just kept going. Yep. They <laughs> like, they I think they bro. mentioned <laughs> they mentioned something like this when they I think they highlighted the movie Candyman on uh that one hundred and one scary movies or horror oh, movies on yeah, shutter. Yeah. And Tony was in the chair being interviewed and they were like, I, I think they were like, yeah, we didn't have money for visuals. So yeah. this is re- this is real. And in 92, they wouldn't have had CGI that good either. Yeah. This is it's totally real. This to- this is a real practical effect that they have. Yep. They got these bees, and, but he uh, was a, he was a quite a legend for doing, like, you know, marshalling through that, soldiering through that, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I totally recommend this to people to watch. It's a good, good, good horror movie. And, and uh, there's like lots of, there are like three sequels, I guess, before the 2021. Something like that. And, and it's kind of like a, there's kind of disagreement amongst fans and so forth about which ones are canon, which if there's multiple timelines, blah, blah, blah. Cause this, this, the new, new one seems to be a direct continuation of the old one. And I don't know. I haven't watched any more, any but those two. So I'm gonna. I, I might look into some of the other ones, but they're not as nearly as highly rated. So anyway. Well, there we go. Yeah, there are three yeah. of them before Candyman 2021. 2021, cool. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad I. I've been wanting to watch it for a while. So thank you for assigning it to me, sir. Well, well, well done on the assignment. No problem. Finally. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. Uh, next time movies. Assign movies. Here we go. Next time movies. All right. What am I watching? Well, you. I would typically spin and this movie's in the on the Rolodex for you. Like it's in the spinner. Yeah. But you mentioned uh, schizophrenia enough Uh-oh. that I'm gonna ass- I'm just gonna choose the movie instead of having it randomly assigned you. The movie is called Identity. 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 Now, let me letterbox that. Two thousand three. Two thousand three. Yep. You know what? I I got about 
20 minutes into this movie and I stopped for some reason. Well, let's find like out it. if just, you can. I just didn't. I think I got distracted. Let's find out if you can keep going. All right. Identity. She's driving a car. Secret lies within. Nice. Okay, cool. Identity. All right, let's... Uh, do, you, do you have any thoughts about the movie? Before I watch Do you have any thoughts about what movie? Any, do, I think, do, do I need to warn any, any... Do I need any warnings about the Identity movie? Um, nope. Just jump in. Just leave right there for you and you didn't say anything at all. Yeah. I'm sorry. I have... <laughs> I have nothing to add. All right. My I'm brain give is you... a complete blank. <laughs> All right. Um, hmm. Which one? How much do I want to give you nightmares or? I love that that's the choice. <laughs> I love that, that that's the, that, that that's so... your, how much do I want to torture Zach this week? <laughs> like that's. <laughs> It's crazy to me. I mean, I, I I could go pretty hard in the paint, as one says in oh. Ohio, apparently. Um, that's just an all over statement. I mean, no, I mentioned that to like I mentioned okay, I mentioned that phrase to my therapist, and she looked at me like I was nuts. She's not, not because cool. she's my therapist, but because she she's, knows what nuts she's is. Not, she's not in. It's fine. All I right. I shared I shared a I shared a TikTok with. Uh, uh, the sales team at work. Yeah, and and Did you get it was sent into HR. It was specific. Like I want no, I didn't get sent into HR. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> um, but I saw the TikTok and went. I think people could relate to this because it's it's this passive aggressive punching bag that you connect to your desk, you hook up to your laptop, and then when oh you sent me this, I think I sent you this, and when you get an annoying email, you punch the punching bag and it automatically types out some sort of line because you, you're so frustrated or whatever. And I was like, I need to send this to my, the, the sales team, the people, the, my coworkers that I work with, because I think that they would appreciate it. Immediate ridicule. I don't really? have, I don't have TikTok because I'm too old. Ugh. Me too. And then someone you, called you me a communist. Of, you, you can watch it. Come on. Someone and then someone called me a communist because Chinese spyware, whatever. And I was like, "Not the world, whatever, dude." Like, yeah. So it's fine. But I say all of that you to say. You don't need I to say all of that to say your your, your therapist didn't know about the cool lingo, and my coworkers are also just a bunch of. I work in a senior. I, like I almost made cool the joke lingo. about, huh? Nothing. What? I almost made the joke about like how I work in. I, I like I I think I almost made the joke something like I didn't realize I work in a geriatric home. I like, just make fun of the fact that I work with these old older people, and I don't work with older people, but they're they apparently don't have. But it's weird that you can. I'm assuming that you could still click on the link, and it'll open up the web browser, so you can you still can. view what I want you to view. Absolutely. But they decided to crap all over me instead. It's fine. Whatever. I'm sorry. States too red. Um, That's it. <laughs> That's sorry. It. Just like literally, just, has my go-to. <laughs> nothing to do with any of that. Yeah. It's All right. I'm going to give you a uh, more a more traditional scary movie, but really really good because it's Guillermo del Toro. But it's oh in English. Gosh, am I going to have to freaking read? No, it's in English. It's in English. Oh in English. In English. Oh my gosh, dude! Shut up! You're <laughs> such a whiner. Ah. <laughs> See, this used to be. I thought this was on your. Uh, on your what to watch list, but it's not. But what? it's gonna be Crimson Peak. Crimson Peak. Crimson Peak. Is this with Loki? Yes. And the the first review that shows up is a five star review. It says all in caps. Tom Hiddleston ass shot with three thousand likes. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! That that comment has three thousand likes. <laughs> Good gravy. Well. It's, I mean, a, it's a good it's a good flick. Okay. My four and a half start it. I will be the judge of that. Love makes monsters of us all, Zach. And where can I watch this? Crimson um, Peak. Let's the see. Prime. The Primes? The Primes. 
So says my website. Crimson Peak. I can watch it on the Primes. Yep, you can watch it on the Primes. What about Identity? Can you watch, where can you watch that movie? Um, I don't know. Can you watch that movie at all? I can watch it on Paramount Plus, which I have, so we're good. Sweet. Yeah. Cool beans. All right. Well, it's been a, it's been a joy and a pleasure and a learning experience and all the things. So I hope yes. your week is full of scary things and joyful things and funny things that are scary and not sad. And I thought I pushed the button. There we go. Pushing the button now. <laughs> <laughs> We're still figuring it out. <laughs> no, yeah. I feel like, you know, let's vamp for a while. Say thanks. Until okay. And until next time, stay poopy. <laughs> I don't know. I, oh, I think we should do um, the... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Give up. See you later. <laughs> See ya. All right, listeners. That's a wrap for another episode of Horrors Yet Unseen. Thanks for joining us. And we'd love for you to become part of the conversation. Just drop us a voicemail at 1216-202-5495 or email us at horrorsyetunseen at gmail.com. And keep up with the latest by following us on Instagram. That handle is at Horrors Yet Unseen Pod. We'd also appreciate it if you like and review our show on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Your support means a lot to us. See you next time. We are professional podcasters. <laughs> okay. <laughs>